A school in New York City is bringing sustainability to the classroom by taking students outdoors. Going outside, we take the air we breathe for granted, and it's really interesting digging deeper into the idea of like what is our air quality like and like what it looks like like every day. It really changes just in general the way I look at life. Living in one of America's most polluted cities, today the class is learning about air quality. We use a model of education um, that's called the expeditionary learning. Students are connecting what they're learning in each of their classes and going out to do field work in the city to learn from their environment. Students designed their own questions after learning about issues related to air quality. Yeah, let's try to retake the photos maybe and see what happens. Clouds. Go ahead and tell us what are what colors are those circles that you're seeing? I'm seeing green. You are seeing green? Mm -hmm. Do you see what numbers are you getting? Yeah, it's zero and that kind of means that like the air quality is satisfactory. Um, wow. Air pollution poses little to no risk with 24 hours of exposure. Something that surprised me about the project was like the big difference between um, the Manhattan borough and the Bronx borough. Because I go to school here in the Manhattan for the first time, but I don't live here, I live in the Bronx. And something that I noticed was that like because of like um, the smoking rates, like um, where I live, there's, you can see cigarettes on the floor like everywhere. It's not unusual. And there's like buildings that are really close together and there's factories near my house so that can cause like pollution from like the smoke coming out of the chimneys. Now, ever since I've like been going to this school and like just familiarizing myself with the environment, I'm always like in my head comparing like the Bronx and Manhattan. You can see kind of really shocking things in the data, including when uh, New York City shut down at the height of the pandemic and the air got really clean and that surprises students and piques their curiosity um, and also learning about how New York City was intentionally designed so that highways ran through black and brown neighborhoods that piques their interest and causes them to be interested in this topic. I think students get excited about this kind of work because it's getting them out of the textbook and connects all the disciplines in a holistic way that is based in their place, based in their community, based in what they see around them and what they think is important. And they feel like they have a voice in their learning process. I think this might only be showing. 58. Oh, where's that? Oh, look, 82. That's where they say I guess the most pollution is coming from. And then there's no nothing that's less exposed than average. It's really interesting to like kind of look outside and to actually analyze that data as what we're breathing, what's going inside our bodies, and how that's going to affect us in the long run, how that's going to affect our kids, things like that. So I was really excited about it. Um, I know a lot of people were. I mean, I, we looked at the data, almost like 7 million people die each year because of poor air quality. So it's like you don't want 7 million people dying each year, like that shouldn't be happening. There's so much data to work with and being able to condense that and really identify what's most important are super important skills for our students to have in the future. Instead of this form of education is helping the students feel directly involved with what they're learning in hopes that they carry these concerns with them into later life. Heavy and it falls. With snow, it's not exactly a slow process. 
maybe if we do this experiment again, is like do more research on the difference between like snow and rain. Our themes here across our school are very much tied to sustainability, but also not because it's just a value of our teachers, but these are topics in society that we're talking about on a larger scale. And this is a generation of kids that we need to be doing the work more than ever. Our hope is that they're leaving here with the skill set to be the change agents our society needs. At the end of an expedition, um, students present their learning to an authentic, real audience um, in what we call a presentation of learning. Hi, I'm Daisy. I'm Natalia. I'm Mila. And we're ninth graders here at West End Secondary. We're currently working on an air pollution research project, and we are curious about how air quality today relates to clouds in the sky. We learned about particles called aerosols, cloud cover, water vapor, and condensation, and pollutants in our atmosphere. But what exactly are these things, and how do they play an effect on our clouds? Students actually experience the process that scientists have to go through in communicating data that could be potentially dry and uninteresting in one perspective, but they can turn it into a narrative that engages a public audience. So it makes students feel powerful in that they can use their data to make meaningful change. We have 12 middle school students, 6th and 7th graders from public school, West End Secondary School in my district. And the importance of this lecture on sustainability isn't lost on this classroom. Climate change is a huge thing with everything going on in today's world. I feel so impacted by something like this just because we have to think about this is our future. I'm worried about what's going to happen. One person isn't going to change anything. We need a community to come together. If enough people do it, it will be able to make a change. 